on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Shields, we're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. As Memorial Day approaches, the Fight for Iowa podcast wants to thank all men and women veterans of the armed services. A salute for keeping the United States free, allowing Americans and the free world to work and recreate at what matters most to each, including Hawkeye football. With spring practice and another school year concluded, players will return to campus in early June for strength and conditioning training, followed by another break in anticipation of fall camp the beginning of August. The new look new year kicks off with Illinois State visiting Kinnick Stadium August 31st. And with a veteran nationally ranked defense set for an encore, much of the attention has turned to the Hawkeyes' new offensive coordinator, Tim Lester. With the spring session and its 15 practices in the rearview mirror, There's a multitude of plays and sets to look at and work on. The offensive line anticipates a big bounce back here. Despite a slew of injuries with that group, the Hawks were solid guard to guard, led by all Big Ten center Logan Jones and Connor Colby and Rusty Feth flanking either side of him. The issue was a tackle where Iowa couldn't stay healthy. Senior Nick DeYoung from Pella and Kansas native Mason Richmond look once again to man those outside positions and give quarterback Cade McNamara the time needed to engineer plays running and throwing. Tyler Ellsbury, Jennings Dunker, Jack Dotzler, and others logged valuable on-the-job training out of necessity. Now with everyone healthy and a new system to learn, they're all eager, especially junior tackle Mason Richmond, a heralded high school player from Leewood, Kansas. Richmond is thankful that his six foot six inch, three hundred twelve pound frame is feeling good again. Like a lot of guys, I feel like a lot of guys speak. You know, speaking for myself, really, the last four years, it's kind of like you get these conditioning reps. That's the biggest thing in the summer, I think. A lot of us think, and you know, we've got some football that we're actually going to work in there. That'll be really good, like a little bit of like some OTA stuff. But um, for me, it's just get in the best shape I can, honestly. And then away from it, just enjoying my last summer with the guys as much as I can, especially on the weekends, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, we, we're, uh, we're going to be golfing. We're going to be, you know, doing all sorts of things, hanging out, building, building as much chemistry in our room as we can. So, Have you ever uh, participated in the – I don't know who gets invited to the Solon hay bale toss. Yeah, no. Have you been invited? I, I haven't been invited. Um, people have asked if I was going to – if if I've done it in the – if. I would do it in the past, and I think I might actually do it this year just to see if I can if I can do anything, just for fun, honestly, because I know I can't beat the big guy, but um, maybe I'll give it a shot this year. <laughs> yeah, the big guy, Jennings Dunker, is sitting right next to us here. But uh, <laughs> what about the offensive? What about the tackles as a group? Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's super senior-led, and obviously a lot of us, you know, luckily have gotten a lot of reps. Um, you know, I think really it's me, Jennings, um, Nick, Jack Dosler's a, a good off-the-bench kind of guy, and um, some of these younger guys are really stepping up. They're getting a lot better. But I think, you know, with me, Jennings, and Nick, like we can all do plenty of things. I think we've all gotten a lot better in, um, in terms of, you know, our leadership on the field, um, off the field type things. But um, the three of us have a ton of reps under our belt, and I think that's the most important thing because that helps you gain a lot of confidence. And if you're playing confident, it's really easy to play out there. So, uh, Tim Lester, that new offense, uh, how have you adjusted to it or have you really had to adjust to it? Yeah, the um, the run game is honestly kind of the same, I, I, I'd almost say. Um, the technique for us, I think it changes a little bit for the quarterbacks and wide receivers getting involved with a lot of a lot of motion, a lot of motion. So that's that's actually, that should be the biggest adjustment we've had to make. We've had to hold a lot our, of pre-snap motion. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pre-snaps. We've had to hold hold those white white knuckles in the ground a little bit longer. So, um, but it's it's been a really smooth adjustment, I think, so far. And um, the guys have really bought into it, and I think it's great. And we've got a great group of guys. I know we lost some guys, but um, I'm really excited for this group going forward, the whole entire offense. So, I remember when you came in as a highly decorated high school senior, uh, all this, everything that, and uh, and then you, you you were introduced to Big Ten football, and it, it really is an adjustment. It's a smack upside the head, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there's a lot of bumps in the road there, but I think I'm older and wiser now, and I can definitely handle my stuff as much as much as, much as I want to. And, um, yeah, I think at the end of the day it's about my determination and 
um, you know, Coach Ray said it best today. He's like, if you if you can't play for yourself some days, like play for some of these other guys you're, you're graduating with. This is your last year. Like this is your, you know, the Jay Higgins, the the Luke Lachey's, the guys, everyone who the, the the Hawkeye football posted. You know, they were coming back. And they never posted. You know me or Nick or any, well, they might have posted Nick, you know, these, the special guys, you might say, you know, just playing for those guys. Cause you know, they've, they've really bought into this and this is the most important thing to them. And they showed that this year and, um, you know, they're showing that in this off season too. So you and Nick, uh, Connor yeah. at guard, uh, you guys have been through a lot, uh, together the last five, six years. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot. Um, and, and you can use it for you against you. I think it's all about your mentality at the end of the day. And, um, you know, you can look at it as you can, look at those bumps and think that they're too tall or you can look at them and understand that you've been on the other side of them now um you know so i think for us it's just about building confidence and you know what what we want to get out of this whole process what we want to do every day and accomplish out there on the field this fall so lastly uh, how reassuring is it uh, knowing how good this defense is how good it's been that if uh, you don't turn the ball over and you, you establish a ground game and clock control uh, this team's always going to be there at the end. Yeah, um, you know it's it's definitely reassuring. But I think for us, it's about doing our job. I'll give you that that political that political answer first. You know, it's about us doing our job. But at the same time, um, I, I think we we've known the whole time. Like if we if we don't turn it over, you know, our coaches have shown us the stats. I think when Iowa doesn't turn it over since fifteen or sixteen, where we've lost two games. One of them was Michigan out there a couple of years ago, and that one we climbed back in at the end there. But like. You know, we, we've always been in these games as long as we take care of ourselves and do the little things as Coach Ferentz says. So, All Big Ten twice and a five-time Dean's List student, Richmond wants to answer the bell for at least 13 games this fall in tribute to line coach George Barnett and Kirk Ferentz, who offered him the chance to be a Hawkeye. Now this time out. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. When it comes to your health, You need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn, and we're proud of it. Because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fanofcorn. Tickets are on sale now for the High V IndyCar Race Weekend Concert Series. Saturday, July 13th, see Luke Combs and Eric Church. And Sunday, July 14th, see Post Malone and Kelsey Ballerini live in concert. One ticket per day gets you into a race and two concerts. Tickets on sale now at HighVIndyCarWeekend.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Mason Richmond has many of the attributes another lineman at Iowa possessed. The great Duke Slater's name has rested on the turf of Kinnick Stadium since 2021. Prior to the high school season kicking off this September, a life-size bronze statue of the Duke will stand in front of Clinton High School, where Slater grew up leading the River Kings to a pair of state titles and eventually powered Iowa to the 1921 National Championship. 
Named a first-team All-American, Duke Slater became the first African-American lineman in NFL history, playing 10 years, earning All-Pro status six times. Playing both sides of the line, the Duke is a member of the college and pro football Halls of Fame. A graduate of the Iowa Law School, Slater practiced in Chicago while playing pro ball and eventually became the first African-American judge to serve the Cook County Superior Court. Ted Tornow is chairman of the Duke Slater Statue Committee. When you think about what he accomplished and when he accomplished it, and, and you put it all into perspective with, uh, with you know, the, time of the, the time that the nation was in, I mean, you're talking 1910, 1910s, 20s, and then to go into the NFL, where right after he got done playing, they bland, uh, banned blacks for 12 years. So, I, I, you know, just the guy, his legacy... His, his, his experiences growing up, the, you know, Neil's book d- details a lot of that stuff. And I think to have the, the ability to do what he did, and, and not that he's superhuman, but you know what? He, he d- deserves to be recognized. And this was his adopted hometown. Glenn Niowa is born across the river in Illinois, moved here at a young age. And dad was a minister. Uh, uh, his uh, grandparents, great-grandparents came from the deep south uh, out of the heart of slavery and uh, it's just a wonderful story, but never lost his love for Iowa and the University of Iowa football. He constantly came back, and that was the, that was the great thing. And Neil, uh, uh, Coach uh, Ferentz alluded to that uh, a couple times, and then uh, Neil in his book, he constantly came back. He knew where he, he got his origins from. He got it from his family, from his faith, and he came back uh, because he, he loved Iowa City. He loved the, the university and wanted to give back. You know, the stories of him uh, showing up four weeks later after he met the team in Chicago just kind of gave further proof that, you know, he, he he had his education, he had his playing career, and he wanted to give back. And that, that, I think, speaks volumes for the kind of man he was. Well, his middle name had to be either determination or perseverance when you think about a young African-American in the 1920s trying to play in the National Football League when they had been banned, played 10 years, was all pro six of those years. Went on to become an inaugural part of the inaugural class, the first college football Hall of Fame uh, a group, and obviously in the uh, finally long overdue, but finally in the uh, NFL Hall of Fame. That that speaks volumes about just the determination, the grit, the toughness that Duke Slater had, lived with, and played with. They recognized him in the state of Iowa, and they recognized him in the college football. Only black in the in the uh, uh, first class uh, college football Hall of Fame. And the uh, centennial class of, of pro football, you hit them all, the trifecta, there you go. Iowa meant a lot to Duke, Duke meant a lot to uh, Iowa, and certainly Clinton. And now we've, uh, you, you've got this fundraiser well underway to build this beautiful bronze statue of uh, Duke that can be uh, forever displayed out in front of Clinton High School. Uh, what community pride that will uh, explode over, over that one event, one issue. If, if anybody goes by there and takes and reads about Duke and learns more about the man and learn what, he str- what his struggles were, if that changes that one person's life, then what we did here is worth every little bit of it. And that's, that's the, I think, what needs to be reminded of is, is those little changes that we make and those little the people that we can touch and we can uh, you know, basically reach out and touch. And that, that's going to be every single high school student, everybody in the community, that's going to read about Duke, that's going to learn about it. Hey, what's this big deal about Duke Slater? Well, they're going to learn about it. They're going to read about it. And that's, that's, going to, that's going to speak volumes for generations to come. Those who are college football fans who love the history of the game, uh, certainly where the University of Iowa is concerned, uh, and where Duke Slater is concerned, uh, people uh, beyond Clinton can get involved with this and help support it. How do they do that? What's the easiest way to do it? DukeSlaterStatue.com. DukeSlaterStatue.com. Everything's out there. Everything's there. So really, it's that's the easiest, simplest way to do it. And Hawk fans have never lost their love of Duke Slater. If you'd like to contribute to the Duke Slater Memorial Statue, you can purchase a brick to be displayed with other donors. Please visit DukeSlaterStatue.com. I'm Gary Dauphin. That's this week's Fight for Iowa podcast. Happy Memorial Day. You've been listening to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. 
Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks! The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.